the Amazon rainforest. Vast, beautiful, encompassing ecosystems of enormous complexity. Home to countless species. Covering 5.5 million square hectares, the rainforest is a resource not just for the people of Brazil, but for the whole world. Environmentalists and scientists consider the sustainability of the rainforest essential for our planet. But farming and development are rapidly eating away this treasure. About 15% has already been deforested. The destruction of so many trees may cause loss of soil through erosion, pollute streams and rivers, cause loss of habitat, and also speed up climate change. Because of the seriousness of these impacts, scientists are researching people, forests, and land use practices in developing and developed countries alike. At Indiana University, scientific groups like SIPEC, the Center for the Study of Institutions, Population, and Environmental Change, want to determine how people sustain good forest management before the forests are gone. The mission of that center is to understand the human dimensions of global environmental change. And we propose to do that in the context of how people in the Western Hemisphere uh, deforest, use the land after deforestation, and what forces lead to some areas growing back, what other areas remain uh, unrestored or, or even degraded. Conservation biologists sometimes think that the preferred form of protecting biodiversity is by keeping people out of an area and creating a protective park. Others in the social sciences have argued that uh, if you create these uh, artificial areas without humans, that the pressure of the human community outside the park is likely to lead to poaching and other forms of resource use, which are even more destructive. And so one of the things our research is trying to do is to rigorously test these various ranges of options and measure the condition of forest, both here and overseas, to see uh, what are all the factors that play into the success of protecting a forest versus other places where it degrades. In Brazil, Rondonia has the highest rates of deforestation. SIPEC scientists conduct comparative studies of two rural communities. Though both were settled in the 1980s, they represent two different types of design and land management practices. The smaller town, Anari, developed along a system of straight right-angle roads typical for Rondonia. But critics say this fishbone design contributes to erosion and lowers land productivity. These drawbacks led the Brazilian government to help fund the development of Massaginho. Here, the road designs follow the landscape, conforming to the variations of the watershed. SIPEC researchers are trying to determine if the Massaginho design leads to a more environmentally sound and equitable use of land. Indiana University doctoral student Mateus Battistella collects data for the project. Mateus and his team spend painstaking hours acquiring biophysical data, sampling vegetation, and testing soil quality. With remote sensing, Mateus uses a satellite map to study the landscape. The purpose is to correlate types of vegetation and soil quality with the colors on the map. Eventually, Mateus will use geographic information systems to create overlays for a multi-layer map, which will indicate land uses and land fragmentation during the past 10 years. Part of the data collection involves spending time with local people asking them how they use the land and observing their actual practices. This Massaginho resident is typical of the area's farmers. In the past, the government allowed people to claim more land because it believed land not used for economic purposes is without value. Just a few years ago, he was a farm worker in southern Brazil. He migrated to Rondonia to obtain his own land and to make a new life for himself and his family. 
He has stewarded his land well. Now he derives income from fruit, coffee, and cattle. This man and his family are rubber tappers. They live in one of the 16 extractive reserves set aside by the government in the Masaginho area. The importance of the extractive reserves is related to the maintenance of biodiversity as this landscape mosaic maintains an equilibrium between the agricultural intensification and other more traditional ways of living here. Rubber tappers also have the right to earn money by cutting some trees and selling them to sawmills. But sometimes they cut trees illegally, a problem for conservation in the reserves. A major issue here is how best to log the forest. The challenge is how to allow some cutting while still maintaining the integrity of the forest. Mateus visits with the owner of a wood mill. At the factories, the trees turn into furniture and other wood commodities. These products sell in more developed areas of Brazil, Asia, Europe, and the United States. Working in cooperation with Brazilian agencies like Embrapa, SIPEX studies will decide which practices are better at extracting natural resources for human consumption and economic profit, while also preserving and protecting the land from degradation. But when trees are clear-cut or burned, Nutrients such as phosphorus are released for farming, but the benefits are short-lived. In only two or three years, the soil will actually be poorer than when they began. Other goals of the SIPEC project include learning how governments make political decisions about land use, how institutional policies affect forests, and how people are organizing themselves to make decisions. When Mateus completes his degree, he will work for the Brazilian Ministry of Agriculture. His SIPEC work will help the government make better land use policies and improve settlement programs in the Amazon. We do keep in mind very clearly that this research is not trivial. It is of significance to the whole change taking place in the biosphere. And that clearly one of our responsibilities is to provide better information and better understanding of the processes so that we can take better care of the planet.